In this session, we're going to cover job accounting as an overview. And if we run out of time, I will do some additional lessons to cover it in more detail. But to start very quickly, off the main menu, we want to take option three, which is called job accounting. And we want to take option one, job cost maintenance, to look at a specific job. And here we have, again, the same type of search criteria field that if you don't know the job number, don't remember it, you can always search by tabbing down to a specific field. In this case, I have the job I want to go into. Field exit and then hit the enter key. And now I'm in job accounting. Now this is a job that basically job accounting what it does is after you've negotiated and, and closed the contract on the job and you finish all your detailing uh, you are ready to transfer all the data from the estimating module over to the job accounting module you'll notice that uh, on the upper right hand corner it highlighted in green is the contract value of forty seven thousand eight hundred and eight dollars and all the header information and all the dollar values transfer over into job accounting from the different modules. If you've estimated the job and you had a markup on it and you plugged in your costs at the time of the bid, that information stays and carries over. Also, when you start generating sales orders or what we call work orders on the job, that data comes over also. So again, we want to eliminate the uh, redundancy and you'll see that this information comes up on the screen as its schedule of values based on hardware, metal doors, metal frames, miscellaneous, which I use for labor installation, and on wood. Now the types are the types that you've assigned in the estimating module. And so we see the, uh, again, we've eliminated the the uh, the decimal point for dollars and cents just to make it easy for data entry. So we have schedule of values on the left, the change order values, the total values, and your work order values, and your balance left to finish. So you change your schedule values, the schedule of your original contract values that comes out to forty seven dollars forty seven thousand eight hundred and eight dollars uh, and change. And your change order values, down at the bottom, we can take a look, Command 2 for change orders. And here in the change orders is we have one change order, change order number 1. And we're going to go into change order, and we're going to see that there are some options, whether it's a proposed change order, whether it's been accepted or declined, you put in the status. Um, the date of the proposal that you've sent whether it was accepted and who was accepted by, and the information, what happened, what caused this change order. And you have two lines of text that you can put in. Now, this is important because it, it this will come out on a report um, when you submit your pay uh, request application on a monthly basis. Now, down here at the bottom, we want to indicate that the change order adds opening 208. The hardware value is worth X amount of dollars. Its cost is X amount of dollars. The metal frame is the values X amount of dollars and the cost, the door and and the installation. And the total value comes out to $480 uh, even with a cost of 890. So I'm going to return F1 and F1. You'll see that my change order values do come up by its category. So we know that we have an original contract value of, of 47808 and then we have a change order value of $1480. As you add more change orders and you follow this procedure, your change order subtitles will always keep increasing here or decreasing, whether it's a credit or net add or combination of the two. So it takes the total values, takes your original schedule values and your change order values and it totals it to 49,288. And your work order values, as you generate work orders and we start releasing materials to the job, your work order values will uh, continue to increase and uh, it'll show you a balance to finish. Now, 
besides the change orders, we can do a, a command three to look at the, the, the work orders that were released on the job. Again, don't have to go to a folder. You can uh, look on the screen and see where it is. Um, F command five shows you the costs on the job by category. You'll have your schedule or estimated costs, your change order costs, your work order costs as you generate work orders and purchase orders. Those actual costs come up on the screen. And then as your shipping information, uh, those costs keep coming over. So you can keep a running tally of where your job is and its percentage completion. Now, besides those, and I just went back to my, my contract value screen, Command 6 shows me my payments. You can keep a running log of your invoice amounts, date of the invoice, when a check comes in by your customer. You can keep that record going here, and this is important because this information will carry over to your, your monthly pay request. And then I'm going to do an F1. And I'm back to the original screen, and F9 shows us what our gross profit percentage is based on our schedule of values. So as you're accumulating this information, you're generating work orders, and you're shipping materials, job accounting will keep a running tally where your profitability is on this job, which I personally think is, is a great tool. So, and then Command 8 shows you, keeps a record from the beginning when the job was negotiated and closed, uh, what the contract uh, number was, the dates in which it was received, when it was signed, and when it went back out, and, and who executed it on the contractor's side. So that's a basic overview in job accounting. And once you have that in job accounting, let me just get out of it, F7 to get out of it, you can go to the report menu and, and go into the pay requests worksheet which is option two and you fill in the numbers this is my job number the date of the pay request and if you have we're going to leave this next field blank because this is our first this is not a final run and, and we're going to run pay request number one so we'll hit the enter key and then at the bottom it says F12 to continue and let me just show you very quickly. I've got it printed out. This is the pay request worksheet that the system generates automatically. And you'll see that it shows all the header information that you see here, whether it's taxable or whether it's the final run. It shows the original contract value. It lists the approved change orders by those items, by its sell amount and its total. And it gives you a revised contract value on the job and based on your what you've invoiced it will show you the total amount invoiced what the balance to finish is and the percent completion now as we roll down it will also show you a, a invoice detail listing which I kind of put in there for the sake of uh, this tutorial um, where it will show all this information so that that minimize you gathering on a monthly basis all the invoices that you've uh, material that you sent out on the job and for every month you just in indicate the next uh, pay request number and its date and the balance of dollars and it will generate these running pay requests monthly pay requests for you so that's job accounting in a nutshell. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. My number is 760-215-9347. My name is Frank Pena. My email address is frank at frankpena.com.